We're joined by Joel Rubin, the former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State. Um, let's uh, first begin. First of all, good evening and thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks, Emily. So what do you think about uh, Kamala Harris's statements? We really haven't heard from her and now pretty, pretty harsh words. What do you make of the timing and what she said? Well, you're right, Emily. Look, these are stark words without a doubt. The policy has not shifted. Uh, the president uh, has been for days now saying he wants a limited ceasefire. He wants the hostages to be released and uh, in exchange for some type of arrangement of, of release of Palestinian prisoners. So there's no real policy difference. But without a doubt, the tone is different. And the vice president made it clear by saying what she did yesterday in a very important me uh, ceremony. This is at the Edmund Pettus Bridge. It's a, a symbol of uh, civil rights. Uh, and, and it's uh, in fitting for her to speak at that because as a black woman, the vice president, she really does uh, provide a window into the growth of the United States. But right there at that moment, she decided to, to lean in on this. And I think it's a, a definite uh, statement to the Israeli government and to Arab states who are pushing Hamas that now is the time for a limited ceasefire. Um, also, let's talk about the, you know, the latest poll that 50 percent of Americans, as opposed to 68 percent from last year, have a very or mostly favorable view of Israel, the lowest rating uh, in over two decades. Yeah, look, there, there's a real softening for Israel's support amongst uh, Generation Z, uh, the young young folks, 18 to 25. And that's it's very troubling for those of us who care about the American-Israeli relationship and, and love Israel uh, uh, amongst uh, voters overall, still very strong support. But there is a gap and it's real and it's driven by events on the ground. And I do think that uh, it's it, it's also now bleeding into anti-Semitism here at home, which is very troubling. Uh, for those of us who care about Israel, to, to see Jewish students, for example, being targeted because they also care about Israel. Uh, but this is real. And the president, what he's trying to do is to try to promote a day after dynamic that leads to an end of state, an end of uh, uh, end state that is uh, grounded in peace between Israel and the Palestinians. And he needs an audience uh, in Israel, uh, in Jerusalem, to agree with that, or at least to act like it agrees with that. But Prime Minister Netanyahu is not giving any space for that discussion. And it's only creating more tensions, which, uh, as we saw in, in your preamble there, uh, uh, Minister Gantz is here in Washington. And there's a reason why he's here in Washington. It's because he is someone who has a vision that is aligned with what the president's vision is about an end state for this conflict. Also, uh, Betty Gantz also you know, ruffled feathers from the prime minister who didn't know. And the prime minister yeah. said to be uh, furious that he's there, especially as both nations are going to be dealing with elections. Well, you know, I, I find it kind of uh, uh, odd that the prime minister is furious that one of his top ministers is visiting America. This strengthens Israel as a whole to have a strong relationship with the United States. Uh, ben Gantz is meeting with the leaders of AIPAC. He's meeting with leaders in Congress. Uh, this is uh, good for Israel. Uh, maybe Prime Minister Netanyahu is envious, but Prime Minister Netanyahu was no stranger to Washington when he was in the opposition, when he was a private citizen as well. So uh, I, I think it's, it's uh, what should we call it, a, a bit of crocodile tears, quite frankly. This is good for Israel to have Minister Gantz here in Washington sharing what he thinks about the American-Israeli relationship and the support of the United States for the Israeli war against Hamas, which is a justified war. All right. Thank you very much, Joel. And uh, we've got more, we've got Dr. Fadi Ismail here in the studio with more. So, what what are your thoughts? I know you're listening very intently, and I know you're really you're taking uh, this. This is a, it's very emotional for you. Also, as we're talking about the UN and the sexual violence, what what's your take on Kamala Harris's point of view? Well, the, she she she. Again, she's the vice president. I'm an American. I respect that. But you can't, like every day, give a different statement that sh that hints at opposite policies. And she, in the last week, she gave a couple of statements that seem, on the surface, as if they are contradicting each other. On one hand, she says that, hey, Hamas, there is a deal that's on the table. Take it. On the other hand is, hey, Israel, stop the war right now. It's either or. I mean, you can't. in the war, you cannot be gray colored. That's the way it is. It isn't. We're not in a peaceful situation where we can look at the relativistic value of every position. You have to. Another thing is, uh, let's say if she's used, if maybe, even if we go to the cynical standpoint and say, well, maybe she's used by the administration 
as um, as, as a as a mouthpiece to to backroom thoughts. Right. Can be used. Has happened in the past. Uh, still, then take one line and we'll go walk with it. Even then, you're not telling us what's brewing behind closed doors. You know, you're not. If, if it's supposed to to pressurize someone, if just pressurize both parties, and and again, the net result is zero. So uh, I'm not really sure. Maybe it's lack of experience. Maybe it's uh, maybe the administration itself is all confused. Maybe uh, it's a policy that is evolving, emerges as we playing it by ear, you know, just put your ear to the ground and see what happens. The worst kind of policy making that can be. So uh, I would rather if Mrs. Harris, either, this, either not say anything about the subject or if she's going to be like the alternative voice, like Gantz is somewhat of the alternative voice in the Israeli side, to stick to something we can understand. Well, what are you saying? Are you telling Hamas, okay, sign the, the, the darn agreement or are you telling Israel, Stop the fire. Which is it? Right. It's not. It's not. It's Make, not clear. Be clear, and because then you're just confusing the matter more. And in the end, they talk to each other behind closed doors. Everybody, so Israel knows exactly what the Americans want. And um, so I'm not really sure what it serves. Uh, maybe it serves something that I don't see right now. I think it's simply lack of uh, communication or lack of, con of of experience. I know the team that works around the vice president. I know the team works around, around the president. Some of them are really experienced. Some of them are really just interns, just fresh out of college. Uh, the White House is not what it used to be right now. So maybe just lack of experience. Maybe maybe lack of understanding, or maybe they don't really understand what the weight of these words. I have been invited by Arabic uh, uh, networks to to comment on Mrs. Harris and. I wasn't really sure I'll comment about what. Right. So, it's not, yeah, so yeah, I had to. I, I see your point. Let's see. also, what, so what do you make of, of uh, Benny Gans now being there meeting? Could he? That's interesting. Yeah, interesting. The timing, it's obviously not. It wasn't, I think, uh, it, it, it wasn't given the red carpet by the prime minister I, I to go know, there. I don't know much Israel. about anything. I, just, I only spent 20 years in American politics, but I can identify. <laughs> you know something. A little bit. But I, can, I, 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 I know grooming when I see it. I think it's being groomed. I think, yeah. I think that Mr. Netanyahu is correct to be half panicky about this because uh, it's, it is clear the Americans are saying, ah, this is a guy we can work with, not the guy you have right now. And, and in, in Israel, those words matter. The Israeli establishment listens to the American establishment and also the American Jewish establishment supports politicians here. In the end, we'll listen to the, to the establishment there. I mean, at the end, it's people. Right. There's a machine behind this, and then it's people, these politicians are, are as strong as the support that they get, mostly from American bodies and organizations. So if now the American government is saying something like that, then... Then, right. All right. Well, thank you very much for your assessment, as always. And uh, thank you all for watching I-24 News. I'm Emily Francis.